All right, what I'm going to do now is uh, show you how to t teach your kids how to learn the 2x2. Two two. And if you're like me, this would actually be helpful for you to learn the 2x2 two two as well. And the reason why I'm making this video is because in learning the 2x2, two two, I found that um, most methods teach you algorithms and steps that you need to memorize, and I found them very hard to memorize. And so in then teaching my own kids, um, I learned that um, by t telling them stories instead of algorithms, they, they picked it up very quickly. And uh, so I think that might be helpful for other kids as well. Uh, so what you'll want to do once you have uh, purchased this for uh, your kid is let them play with it a little bit. I think if they play with it and continue to fiddle with it, then it's probably worth trying to then uh, teach them uh, how to uh, solve uh, this cube. And the 2 by 2 is the way to go. It's the way to start when teaching a child to uh, learn because it's easier than the 3 by 3 But I'll be making a video with stories of the 3 by 3 as well for you. Um, so what you want to do first is um, have, see if they can come up with a way of uh, solving one side. So tell them, start solving the white side. See if you can do that. And you'll find that kids are very, very fast in finding ways of making one side become solved and after they've done that a couple of times just point out to them that uh, really the trick is to solve it in a way like this where the sides are matched as well not like this where they're mismatched there's, there's they haven't really made any progress if if this hasn't matched so then once they've got that they're able to solve one on their own perhaps um, and they're still showing an interest then then probably this is a good time to sit down and to show them what I'm about to show you uh, so the first step I guess is just to start and start by picking out any old white piece and often a new cube comes with a little uh, sticker uh, some sort of a paint uh, marking here pick that one maybe to start with so they always know where to look for the one that they want to start with look at the colors on them in this case orange and green uh, so what you'll need to do is look for a white that has a green on it that goes here or a white that has an orange on it goes there uh, and what you need to do is is have the white pieces um, that you are eventually going to be putting up into this top layer here pointing towards you, just like this one is here. This is perfect. So this is actually a good one to start with. And so in this case, this is uh, green and red. Uh, so what you'll want to do, this is perfect position when it's actually pointing at you. So I say, you know, point it at your belly button and uh, then put it right below where you want it to go. So this one has green on it. This one has green on it. You know, you want this one over here. Uh, so put it right below where you want it to go straight up to the top and then have them imagine that this is actually a slide in a park and there's some kid up at the top of the slide that's too afraid to go down the slide and you want to go on it. Uh, so if you want them to get off so you can go on it, you have to get out of their way. So get out of their way but stay near the front here so you still have your place in line. Let the scared kid get off of the slide and then take their place and go up to the top of the slide. Okay, it's like that every single time here. You're, you've got one, uh, two of them lined up perfectly now. There is another one now that has become facing, pointing at your belly button, and figure out where it goes. In this case, we have blue and red. So help your child figure out that that needs to go right here, right beside the other white and red. So you need to turn that around so that it's right below where you want it to go, which is right here. Okay, so same story. You want to go on the slide. There's another kid there. Get out of the way so they can get off the slide. Then you can go on the slide and go all the way up to the top. And uh, you can sort of see that another white one's become available, pointing at your belly button, perfect position. Go underneath where it has to go. In this case, we have orange and blue, blue and orange. So you know it needs to go right here. It needs to go straight up. Place it there, right below. Move out of the way. Let the scared kid come down. Get on the slide. Go to the top. And that's it. Your first step of three steps is done. And uh, it's a very straightforward little story to help them remember what they're, what's going on here as they put the pieces up. You might find that um, the, you might have a position that's very confusing for a kid where you have a white in a weird place. Um, like, for example, um, let's, this would be a good example here, where you have a white uh, at the top 
You've just finished three pieces. One white that's in the wrong position. You need to somehow turn this around. You need to get it out of the top row so that it's pointing at your belly button again. So the way to do that is get it out of the top row. Move it out of the way and put that back up. Because these three pieces are good. Now that one needs to come up here. So put it in the right position, pointing at your belly button right below where you need to go. Get out of the way for the scared kid to come down the slide. Get on the slide, go up to the top. Okay, so that's in one way. The other thing you might find is that there'll be a piece um, on the uh, uh, on the bottom, like like this, for example. So you've got a white piece down on the bottom. It's not pointing at your belly button at all. Well, make it so. So if it's here, you, what you can do is bring this down, and in doing so, this piece is now pointing at uh, can be pointing at at the. Uh, your belly button. So move that out of the way. It's over on this side now. Put that back up and now you know that you have the piece down on the bottom row. Okay, get out of the way. Kid comes down, gets on, climbs up the top. If you uh, your your child is able to do this, have them practice it a few times. Mix it up a few times, give it back to them, and after they're able to maybe do it two or three times, just like this, coming back with this, and tell them they're ready for the next step. The very next step is to turn it over. Turn it over and see what you see. It's a bit of a surprise when you look over on the other side because what you're doing now is, this is the white side, you are going to next be solving the yellow side. You turn it over, next step is solve the yellows. In this case, all the yellows are on the sides here and here. You'll see some cases where you have yellows here and here. You'll have some cases where you have only one yellow on the top. You can tell them right now what you're trying to do is get all yellow solved, but the way you know you're going to be about to solve it is you'll see one yellow on the top. That's the magic pattern. That's what you want to get. To get to that magic pattern, you need to do another story, sometimes over and over again. And for a kid who can't remember exactly how to hold it, just tell them the story and have them do it a few times. And eventually you'll get to that magic pattern. And let's do that now. Okay, so what you'll do, just have them do the story a few times. Usually you're holding on with your left hand and you do it with the, your, the story with your right hand. In this case, the story is that the, the birdie flies up, gets hit on the head by the roof that was over its head that it didn't see, falls back down, roof is still there, flies up again, gets hit on the head two times, wang bang, and then falls down. In this case, um, my son now gets very excited because he sees the magic pattern, which is one yellow on the top. That's perfect. Now, there's only there's one of two ways to hold it. This way, close to your belly button again, or this way, close to your belly button again. You don't know which magic pattern you have until you look at the side. You want to find the clean side. This is not a clean side because it has a yellow on it. So try the other way. Put it near your belly button this way, and check this side out. Okay, this side has no yellow on it, so this is the clean side. Hold on to it and tell the birdie story uh, on this side. Okay, just so you know, if you had seen the yellow here and the clean side was right here, you'd tell the same story on the other side as a mirror image. Okay, so here we go. We're holding on with this side. Here's the birdie story. Bird flies up, gets hit on the head, falls back down. Roof is still there flies up again, gets hit on the head two times, and then falls down. So now we have the yellow solved. Um, just again, it, just so you know, the you could have, if you had the magic pattern again, clean side here, yellow there, you would have done the other side. It would have looked like this. Bird flies up, gets hit on the head, falls down. Roof is still there, flies up, gets hit on the head two times, and falls down. Okay, you can actually have your child practice this a few times, just like I've done, because you're not disrupting the white layer. You're just you're just cycling through different patterns here. And in this case, we have recreated uh, the magic pattern again. Clean side here, yellow there. So you're going to do what you now know. You're going to do the birdie story one more time, the right birdie story, and you'll you'll get the yellow side solved. So that's flies up, gets hit on the head, falls down. Roof is still there, flies up, gets it on the head two times, and then falls back down. Okay, now what you want to do is turn your cube around and look at the sides. This is the last step here, and you're solving these other sides. What you want to do is find a match right below the yellows. There'll only ever be one or none, uh, but find one where the two colors match. This is great. There's one side match. This will save us some time. Connect 
the matching side. So find its partner, in this case it's blues, they're lined up, and move them away from you. Okay, so not those partner the matches away from you and uh, then show your kid how you can go back into the land of make-believe so take your cube yellow side up and turn it back into the land of make-believe so now the white side is facing uh, your belly button all right so then there's one more story to tell and it's the knight and the dragon my son loves this story uh, so what you do is show how the knight goes down the stairs into the dungeon and closes the door behind him goes all the way down to the very bottom where the dragon sleeps and the dragon wakes and attacks twice rar rar the knight goes up the stairs halfway opens the door to get out but changes his mind and goes back to fight the dragon again the dragon attacks again rar rar and then the knight runs all the way one two up the stairs to the top and out and if you'll notice now all you have to do is make a quick uh, quarter turn and uh, all the colors line up you've solved the cube if you had no matches remember that where we went back in the land to make believe if you have no matches all the way around then it doesn't matter it doesn't matter which side as long as you go back into the land and make believe having white facing your belly button you do the whole night story uh, and then match up whatever colors do occur and then do the night story one more time all right so that um, will then leave it solved so you either have to tell the night story once or twice depending on whether you have a matching color on, on one of the sides that can be lined up okay so that's it uh, if you have questions let me know uh, and if you have uh, suggestions as well let me know uh, these stories have worked for our kids and uh, I hope they work for you and they work for yours okay take care